Staying organized and productive was always an uphill battle for me. I'm a person who naturally enjoys doing less and oftentimes doing nothing at all. But when you're someone who actually wants to get things done, you need some sort of system in place to be able to do that. At least that was the case for me. Thankfully, there are resources out there to help with that, specifically resources like Notion. Today, I'm gonna to dive into my personal way of getting things done and organizing my life with the sponsor of today's video, Notion. But first, if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Here we talk about minimalism, frugal living, tech, and things of that nature. So if that sounds good to you and you end up liking the video, be sure to like and please cut a hole into all of the subscribe button socks. Let's get started. I currently have a few pages that I use for different aspects of my life. So I'll be going through those one by one and how I have each of those set up. And please bear with me because my setup is far from sophisticated, but it's simple and that's the way I like it. When I first open up Notion, the only page I have in my favorites is my homepage. For me, this is perfect because it's arranged in a way to where this homepage will display everything I need and acts as sort of a portal for me to get to whatever page I want to get to. And the best part, this template is pre-installed. I just made some adjustments that work for me. And further explaining this, what I did is create just two separate columns that pretty much encompass every aspect of my life that I want to keep organized or keep track of. Everything from video ideas, financial goals, and plans for my next trip are found right here. Like I said, Notion can be as simple or as sophisticated as you want it to be, and keeping a clean homepage like this has worked best for me so far. And I'll go over the right side first because it's not changing as frequently as the left side is. At the very top, I have the goals for this year, and I keep this at the top because it works as sort of a constant reminder to stay a little more focused on these things, and just having it at the top of the list makes me feel a little bit more accountable to actually work towards these things. And when I click 2023 yearly goals, I'm presented with a simple checklist for the goals of this year. I try to make this fairly exclusive and only put things here that I feel like I have a fairly good chance of accomplishing. Well, except for the Spanish fluency and the subscribers, I'll need some help with those. One of my top priorities right now is travel and to just experience as much as possible. So I believe a page dedicated to travel was justified. Upon clicking to enter my travel goals page, I just keep a simple list of what I have planned for this year. Having this is nice because it helps me stay on track with travel plans, and I've definitely learned that it's better to start planning sooner than later. For an upcoming trip to Key West, if I click on this here, I'll get this little side panel that shows some notes like making arrangements, my packing list, and even a Google Maps plugin where I can browse around the area I'll be staying. Once again, the beauty of this is that this was just a built-in template that I chose and changed according to my needs. So don't look at this and just see a ton of work to do because it's really not. Lastly, on the right-hand side, I have a page dedicated to shows, movies, and books I want to check out or that I'm in the middle of or that I finished. Not gonna lie, I actually used to think it was really stupid when people did this. Like, do you really need a spreadsheet for this? But ever since making one for myself, it gives me some small things to look forward to and makes it easy to keep track of the 20 shows I'm in the middle of watching. I'm a huge fan of shows and movies, and I always lose track of where I am as far as seasons and episodes. So this is just a fun way of keeping it organized. And I'm about to start season four of Succession, by the way. It's really good. Now we'll move over to the left column. And on this side are pretty much the things I interact with every single day when I open Notion. This includes my daily habit tracking, video ideas, and pretty much anything related to video content. And I'll start at the top with daily self-care. I hate calling it that, but that's just what it is. And this list has things I want to do every single day, but also aren't detrimental if I miss a few out of the month. So right now I have writing, going to the gym, drinking enough water and staying away from my devices for at least an hour of the day. And I picked these because these are like the four core things that just overall make me feel better, especially when all done in the same day. And I made these very lenient for myself. So whether I'm journaling or writing a video, as long as I'm writing in some regard, I'll check this off. And when I finish all of these habits for the day, the little ring at the bottom closes. So it's like a little achievement and you could customize this in the template. This page isn't work related. It's just a simple thing to look at and remember to take a little bit of care for myself. Next are my video ideas and notes. 
Having a bunch of video ideas and having some more written than others, it's incredibly important to keep them organized in some capacity. So if I open this page, I just have a few ideas with a working title, as well as a couple links underneath it about shots I'm thinking of or the script itself. So if I click link for the B-roll, it'll show me the exact shot list, but no spoilers here. And once a video is completely done being edited, I'll check this off and it's done from there. Right under my videos page is my bread and other recipes. I've only ever really shown bread making in my videos, but baking in general is just very therapeutic for me. Anyways, once I open this page, I have a chart that shows me the product itself. I have a little column that tells me if it's ready to be made or not, and a link to where I found the recipe itself. If I click the title of the product, I have this little side panel that opens and gives me all the ingredients and instructions for baking, as well as pictures of the bread. There's a lot of stuff I want to bake, and this is just the simplest way I found to keep it organized. Lastly, on the left column, I have a page for my financial goals for the month. Once I enter this page, I'm brought to a mid-sized list of things I would like to do by the end of the month. These things include personalized goals that I'm trying to make realistically accomplishable. Things like contributing more to my Roth IRA or getting a cheaper phone plan, which I did. I could change the status based on where I feel I am with progress and I have notes with some bullet point tips to help me reach those goals. I have to say overall, the best part about Notion is how incredibly customizable all of these templates are. I feel like I have the least sophisticated layout I've ever seen, and it's still working wonders for me. So as I polish this up a little bit, I'll be looking to export some of these templates to share. You could sign up for Notion for free using the link at the top of the description box. Give Notion a try and see if it streamlines everything for you the way it has for me. Anyways, thanks again Notion for sponsoring this video and I hope you got some value out of this. As always, I appreciate the time you spent here and I appreciate you watching. If you did like this video and you like this type of content, be sure to like and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time.